Hey fam, this is Andy Swanson from Outclair coming to you live from the loft. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about studio monitors and using in-ear monitors in the studio in particular. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of us are at home and we're recording or we're uh, doing podcasts, maybe we're doing video editing in situations that are maybe less than ideal in terms of sound. You know, maybe we're away from our studios or um, in, in my case, I'm in a loft and it, that might sound um, like sexy, but um, really it's not. It just means it's like the stair landing. Um, and I've got kids and when I wanna make music, there's just no way for me to use my like good studio monitors because it's just loud. The environment is loud and um, there's kids everywhere and then the, the doorbell ring. I mean, it's just less than ideal, right? So in-ear monitors though are a really great tool because now I can go into my in-ear monitors and I can get the exact mix that I need. I can hear exactly what I need to hear. I can produce, I can do tracks, I can do my podcasting. If you're mixing a podcast, let's say, or you're video editing, this is a really great tool for that. Um, so I want to talk about kind of two separate things when it comes to studio monitoring. Uh, one is like our stage line and, and a second is our studio line. But overall, what we're looking for when you're doing any kind of monitoring, any critical listening, any kind of reference listening, is, is we want a monitor that's going to present it very flat, very accurate. Um, because, um, for example, one time I was working on a plane and I was, I was recording a, a hip hop song or, or mixing a hip hop song and it sounded awesome, right? I was using my in-ear monitors. I had one set at the time and I came home and I was so eager to show everybody this, this bang, bang in track. And I put it on and it was just like, boom, boom. it just wasn't that robust bass that I'd heard in my ears. Well, I mean, I should have known better, but right, I was using the, the Crank Masters, which has four subs. And so the monitor itself was providing so much low end that I compensated in the mix and pulled all the low end out. So consequently, it sounded terrible. So we want a monitor that's flat, that's even, that's not going to color it, that's not going to add anything to it. The, the monitor doesn't add to it. And so we have a few choices and um, we created a studio line just for the purpose of monitoring um, in, the, in the studio. Um, but we also have stage monitors that can, that can work out well. Uh, for those of you who are doing podcasting or stuff from home, maybe you're um, live streaming and that kind of thing, and you still need to use in-ear monitors because you just don't want the white buds hanging off your ears and I don't blame you, um, or headphones, right? Um, there's some monitors you can use for the stage as well as um, a critical listening environment. So I'll, I'll talk about those. So, so let's just jump right in. Um, on the stage side, and especially if you're um, budget conscious like most of us are right now, um, we've got a universal UV2, which is um, a really great sounding monitor and you don't have to get um, impressions made for it. You can purchase it on our website today and get them tomorrow. Well, we can ship them tomorrow. Um, you can go with the Versa, which is fairly flat, fairly balanced, uh, pretty even. It has a little bit of a low end emphasis, but uh, you can kind of get around that. Uh, the reference is really flat, really accurate. The reference does start to roll off the low end a little sooner than I would like to for reference mixing but it can work in a pinch and work as stage and your reference monitoring. Really the, the first one that does great at both is the RSM. The RSM is pretty balanced and even, it's very accurate. You're hearing a lot um, more clarity and detail than you do on some of the other monitors. It's got four drivers. It's got two low end drivers, a mid and a high. So you got some great separation there. Um, and it works really great on stage as well. The um, RSM has a little like a punchy low you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't color the low, it's not emphasized, but it punches, punches through. Um, so it's, it's really great. I, I like to use it actually for, for mixing from time to time. So that's our stage line. Um, I, and we say stage line, but it, that doesn't mean it's only for stage. It just happens to be what we made them for. Now, the studio line. That's really what I want to talk to you about because we made the studio line uh, specifically to be a studio monitor. And there's three models, models that fit into the studio line, the Studio 3, the Studio 4, and the Electro. So let's start with the Studio 3. The Studio 3 is, as you would expect, a uh, triple driver. Uh, fancy that. Three drivers and three bores. Uh, why is that important? All right, 
The bores are important because when um, your driver is connected to a tube and then it comes out of a port and then it goes into your ear canal, which hits your eardrum, the RSM has two bores, which means that somewhere those four drivers are combining into a tube. And so there's going to be some mixing happening in the tube, which can cause some distortion, some turbulence. Um, you don't really hear it as distortion, you, but where you would hear it as a subtle lack of clarity. So when we move to three ports for a three driver, you're getting all the clarity that you need because the sound is mixing in your ear canal, not in the tubes. Um, so it is really great for mixing. The Studio 3 is probably our most... Um, it's, it's probably our, our, the, our monitor that flies under the radar the most. Um, it is a fantastic monitor. It sounds so great. In fact, it's probably my favorite monitor that we make. It is um, balanced and even. It's got accuracy. It's got detail. It does have a little bit of a slight, um, a very gentle low end and upper end kind of curve very gently. But that doesn't mean you can't mix on it because you get this clarity and you get this detail. Um, they sound absolutely fantastic. They do come with our premium cable, which I'll talk a little bit about um, in just a moment. But the Studio 3, three bores, three drivers, fantastic first entry into our studio line. The next entry is our Studio 4. Studio 4, as you might guess, has four drivers. You have two low end drivers, a mid driver, and a high driver. The two low end drivers stuck together like that is important because it gives you more headroom. Most uh, modern mixes are about 80% low end energy. So when you have two uh, drivers or more put together, that allows you to have um, more absorption, you know, or, or the, the low end works on those low end frequencies, letting the mid and the treble not have to work quite as hard. So you get more separation, you get more um, sound stage, you get more clarity and you get more detail. The Studio 4 uh, has three bores because of that, because the two drivers are work, networked together. That's on one, in the mid, and the high. So you get a really, really accurate picture. Um, in fact, it, it's so accurate, it's like hyper balanced, like super balanced. If you're just listening to your modern music and stuff, you're going to hear it how it was, um, how the monitor engineer or the, the recording engineer heard it. Sometimes it's not as exciting. Um, as we're used to because we're used to now monitors that have a contour to it. Our, our skull candies, our beats, our, um, even our Apple um, buds have a little bit of a contour to it. And that's something that, that we perceive as more exciting. So the Studio 4 is just flat. And so you lack, lack a little bit of that um, excitement, but that's exactly what you want in a studio monitor because you want to be able to reproduce and hear what was recorded and you want to hear all the subtle details that go along with it. So that's a Studio 4. The next one is the Electro. The Electro, we were the first, Alcla was the first company to build a custom in-ear monitor with an electrostatic driver. So this baby has four balanced armature drivers and one, uh, two electrostatic drivers per ear. So what's the deal with electrostatic? An electrostatic driver is super light and it's super fast. Um, in fact, a lot of companies are using their electrostatic as tweeters and just kind of run them um, up high so you can really hear it. What happens is because an electrostatic is so light and so fast, that can, that can translate into a brittle or harsh if it's not tamed down a little bit. So what we did is we put that electrostatic just under just under the balanced armature drivers. So what that electrostatic does with that quickness is it fills it in and it gives us clarity. It gives us detail that's like unheard of. When you listen to an electrostatic, um, our electro in particular, you are going to hear things that you've never heard in music. Often you're going to hear things that the, uh, <laughs> the recording or mix engineer did not expect you to hear because it sounds so good. So when you're ferreting out any kind of phase issue, when you're listening for reverb tales, when you really want to hear the character of a reverb, the Electro is what you should go for. All of our um, studio line come with our premium cable. And our premium cable is designed, it's a little more robust um, as at the jack, right? We've got a Neutrik jack here. What I would recommend if you are going to use any of our studio line uh, on stage, I would probably recommend getting one of our standard cables. Our standard cables have the ear hook where our premium cable does not. And why that's important is when you have 
in the studio, it doesn't matter so much. But when you're on stage, you want those ear hooks not only to kind of keep the cable in place, but also because that ear hook removes some of the stress from this jack point. And when, especially, let's say you're a drummer and you're moving all the time, you know, you're going to wear out that cable, you're going to wear out the jacks. A $30 um, replacement cable is not a big deal. That's what our standard cables run. And that's just the nature of touring, the nature of playing live, is you're going to need to replace the cables. Much better to replace that cheaper cable than the more expensive premium cable. But the premium cable, what's the deal with it? Why is it important? Well, we designed the studio line with this cable um, in particular because this cable sounds fantastic. And here's why, uh, some of the reasons. One, it's a fully copper cable. It's, um, if you're really into the stats, it's, it's pure oxygen-free cable uh, with a Litz geometry. The Litz thing isn't actually pretty important, but um, what the cable is made of, this is made up of copper, uh, where our standard cables are made up of a tinsel. And the copper is a great conductor, so it just allows that sound to just, with very little impedance, go straight to the in-ear monitors. Another thing is the Litz wire reduces what's called the skin effect. The skin effect is uh, frequencies have a tendency to hover towards the outside of a strand, outside of a cable when they're going down the path. And the higher the frequency, the more likely they are to, to hover on the outside. That doesn't happen with Litz wire. So with a standard wire that has that skin effect, you are going to have a different um, it's almost immeasurable impedance differences, but there is a difference with the Litz wire that largely goes away. And so um, you're really getting things clear without having the cable interrupt or um, color the sound at all. So with this premium cable, you get detail, you get clarity, you get this um, separation. Uh, th things are tighter. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but if you listen to one and then you listen to the other, the, the standard cable, and then you listen to the premium cable, things are just tighter and uh, fuller. So it's, it's really cool. It's a great um, cable to be sold with this studio line. So using the Electro or the Studio 3, you're going to hear things that you haven't heard before in your, in your songs. Like, for example, I'll use um, 21 Pilots Heathens. And there's that part, you know, towards the, the end where it's just And it just sounds like this big guitar piece. But when, when you start listening to it with the studio line, you hear the layers. You hear that there's some vocal in there and some guitar in there and some other distorted effects that are going. You can hear all those things. I'll use Pearl Jam Smile because I can hear the spring reverb. And it's just, you can tell that it's a spring reverb, not just that it's a reverb. You can tell it's a spring reverb. You can tell that it's coming from the amp. It's just really cool that way. Um, some other songs, if I'm listening for the low end, I'm gonna listen to like, Don't Let Me Go by Chainsmokers or Wow by Beck. It just has that boom. Or uh, let's see what else. Uh, for acoustic stuff, you know, I'm gonna listen to Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. I'm gonna use Big Chair by Travis. I'll use a Feeling Good by Nina Simone or a Knucklehead by Grover Washington Jr. Oh, you're just getting this great feel for how those instruments play together and you can really tell a lot about a monitor from that. The reality is most people aren't gonna have a chance to try out monitors, so you're gonna have to kind of go on what we say and what we, how we describe them. So find something that works best for you, something that um, you know is going to fit what you're playing or what you're doing well. And on our site, we try to describe it that way so that you get a good example, not just of what it's supposed to do, but how you're supposed to feel, what it's supposed to do for you. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. You can hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, ask us anything, hit us up on email, give us a call. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. We're here for you. We want to um, respond as best we can, whatever questions that you've got. Um, we want to be a small part of what you do. Uh, when you do what you're called to do, you're going to inspire others to do what they do. And when you inspire others to do what they do, then they're going to inspire others to do what they do, and so on and so forth. We're just excited. We're just excited to be a part of, of what you're doing. So that's it for now. We're going to do a few more of these, so keep on the, the lookout for them. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys.